at Sahas, we manage uh, different types of waste. We have two decentralized waste management centers, Kasarasa 1 and 2. Each of these centers has a capacity to manage about one ton of wet waste and one ton of dry waste every day. But as a, we also have on-site waste management, where we basically offer professional waste management services to communities, to institutions, corporates, and totally on an average we manage about 12 tons of waste a day. We are a hybrid organization. The waste management with the corporates, institutions, that is done by our uh, private enterprise. Whereas the NGO part of it looks after these decentralized waste management centers. We have awareness programs and currently we're also having a program involving school children. And we are trying to educate them about how a decentralized waste management se center works, the importance of waste management and how we have also show them recycled products. Uh, basically, we are trying to close the loop and tell them that waste is a resource and we elaborate on the concept of uh, resource recovery from waste. So what we do is, we have a process to drain out the nutrients and one of you can just lift that. This is a compost pit which is layered. You have one layer of uh, 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 of leaves, then one layer of food waste, another layer. This is basically to maintain the nitrogen carbon uh, balance. Okay, so where does the carbon come from? The segregated dry waste that comes to us, we have this process called secondary sorting of dry waste. So we have several categories of plastic, several uh, categories of paper, all of which need to be recycled differently. So what our ladies here are doing is they're um, sorting out the different types of segregated dry waste. So glass is uh, sent to a separate unit, you have colored glass, uh, glass is segregated based on color, then you have different types of plastic based on the density of the plastic, and you also have shredded paper, white paper, color paper, each of which has a different process. And we also have uh, Tetra Pak recycling. And Tetra Pak is basically a combination of aluminum, paper and plastic. The aluminum and plastic, uh, we recycle them to make these boards. In fact, the roof of our unit is made from these boards. And we all, um, from the paper part of it, we make recycled paper. We have the facility, we have several collection centers across the city where we collect e-waste. And besides this, we've also been looking to channelize e-waste from the household sector to authorize recyclers and we are doing this using schools. So we have tied up with EMC Squared uh, who's, who are the sponsors of this program. So we are trying to reach out to about 100 schools in Bangalore. This program is called Responsible Recycling of E-Waste and we hold sessions for the children in these schools. The school is provided with a bin, with an e-waste collection bin and uh, the students are requested to spread awareness on e-waste in their neighborhood and, all, and collect e-waste and come back. We also encourage uh, apartment complexes to conduct these e-waste drives. So we support them with it and uh, then the, uh, all the e-waste that is collected goes to authorized recyclers for safe recycling. Uh, what happens in India is almost 96% uh, of the e-waste which is recycled is done in the informal sector. Now we are cha trying to channelize this to the formal sector but at the same time we are working with the informal sector and trying to upgrade them to adopt the practices of the formal sector. We went to the segregation unit and saw the OWC machine and saw the making of manure as well. We learned to segregate waste effectively. We saw and learned about the lives of powder karmikas and how the, you know, the, the gases affect their health. Compost with them to see. Yeah. See now. Take it in the hand and see children. I want you to feel that. Here. Do this. 